WhatsApp dia tak boleh connect, nak copy link dulu je. Tak apalah nak guna. Saya nak copy link. Saya nak guna WhatsApp tu tapi lambat lah. Tak boleh. Tak apalah guna drive Cara ni tak apa-apa bergunakan. Saya guna drive, saya masukkan. Dan saya ambil daripada drive saya kat sini. Lambat lah. Tak boleh masuk. WhatsApp lah? Oh. WhatsApp buat apa? Ini WhatsApp buat ni. Lambat sikit. Kecuali jika saya guna. Ada connect wifi lah dulu. Tapi tak boleh. Ah boleh dah. Okay. Tak boleh. Tapi phone saya tak boleh. Cucu tengok. Uh, cucu connect wifi boleh? Haa ah, boleh. Sekejap. Ya start pula. Haa ah, okey. Haa ah, okey. Baru boleh. Saya ambil dari sini Bukan sini, alah. Tapi apa kau sini nak tu apa? Hmm. I'm gonna tag myself easier. Hmm, you have to tag, uh, I tag the wrong thing. Slash. Ah, this is very troublesome. That's why. I'm not going to use this anymore. Yeah. F X A A P W W B Y E W F X A A T W W B Y E W lah. It's even faster. Let me get it through. Let me check uh, the live here.
Selamat pagi kepada semua. Uh, kita dah kembali dah kepada sesi CME mingguan kita pada hari ini untuk uh, sesi uh, daripada pengkat hospital lah. So untuk hari ini kita dengan segala hormatnya telah menjemput Dr. BJ uh, pakar perubatan dalaman untuk berkongsi sedikit tentang penyakit stroke dengan rawatan yang seangkatan dengan ni lah. So title for today is actually stroke time is print. Okay, uh, so sekarang saya serahkan uh, Tempat ni kepada Dr. BJ untuk teruskan presentation dia. Dipersilakan Dr. BJ. Okay. Morning everyone. Uh, thank you Mr. Tio for the introduction. Uh, my name is BJ. I'm a physician from Hospital Sultan Maliha and today my topic will be stroke. Time is brain. So the outline of my topic today will be I'll be talking about the introduction to stroke, why time is brain, and I'll be touching on acute stroke pathway. So first and foremost, let's talk about what is stroke, and subsequently I'll be talking about the stroke data in Malaysia, and also the stroke data in our own hospital, Sultan Maliha, Langkawi. So what is stroke? Stroke is a medical emergency which occurs when the blood supply to an area of the brain is blocked or reduced. So insufficient blood Insufficient supply of blood to an area of the brain causes a lack of oxygen and nutrients. Hence, if the blood flow is not restored, blood brain tissue will die, causing permanent disability. So let's look at the stroke data in Malaysia. What has changed in the last decade from 2007 to 2017? If we look at the top 10 causes of death in among Malaysians in 2017, stroke, as you can see here, is the third commonest cause of death, accounting to about 7% of death in 2017 alone. And if you look at this uh, diagram here, uh, in 2007, stroke was the fourth commonest cause of death, whereas in 2017, in the space of 10 years, it has become the third most commonest death, uh, co third most commonest cause of death, accounting to a change of about 40% in the space of 10 years. So what's the burden of stroke in Malaysia? In 2016, there were about 92 admissions for stroke alone per day. And 40% of these patients were below the age of 60. And there were 32 deaths per day as well due to stroke. Looking at the cost of management of stroke in 2016, it accounted to about 180 million ringgit for uh, cost of admission for about 34,000 admissions per year in the year 2016. However, only 3 out of 10 of these stroke patients had independent living post-stroke, whereas the remaining 7 had some a degree of disability or dependence on others post-stroke. So let's move on and look at the stroke data in our own hospital, Sultana Maliha, from, the, from January to November 2020. In total, there were 163 patients admitted for stroke with almost equal gender equal uh, distribution. And if you look at this data, almost 80% of the uh, stroke patients had ischemic infarct whereas the remaining 20% had intracranial bleed. It shows that ischemia is the, is the most commonest cause of stroke in our hospital as in the worldwide as well. So among these 163 patients who had stroke in our hospital last year, uh, 157 were discharged back home, while six succumbed to death. So why time is brain? So if you look at this diagram here, Time is brain tissue. The the red uh, arrow shows the, the 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 black dot, which is the ischemic core, in which the brain tissue is destined to die after a stroke. However, if you look at the area around the black dot, the, the gray area, that's called the penumbra, which is a salvageable brain area. If the blood profusion 
is reperfused promptly. So an untreated patient loses approximately 1.9 million neurons every minute in the ischemic area. So if we manage to reperfuse the blood flow to the penumbra area, reperfusion occurs the potential to offers the potential to reduce the extent of the ischemic injury. In normal human beings, about 31 million neurons per, are lost per year in normal aging. However, if you look at in stroke patients, about 120 million neurons are lost per hour, which accelerate the aging by 3.6 years. So there's a study by Leaf et al, which was published in Lancet in the year 2010, which uh, shows the importance of early thrombolysis. So the study actually managed to look at the number of patients needed to treat NNT to achieve excellent recovery using modified ranking scale. This modified ranking scale is a scale used to determine the degree of disability or dependence post-stroke. So if the MRS is 0 to 1, it shows that patient has full recovery or very minimal uh, disability post-stroke. So this diagram actually shows very clearly if the thrombolysis was initiated within 90 minutes from the time of onset, the NNT is only 4 to 5. Whereas if the patients were thrombolyzed with 90 minutes to 3 hours post-stroke, from the time of onset, the NNT becomes 9. And if the thrombolysis was initiated 3 to 4.5 hours after the time of onset of stroke, the NNT is 14. So in conclusion, the earlier we thrombolyze, the better it is to achieve, the, the better chances we have to achieve excellent recovery among these patients. So this is another diagram to show that um, uh, the LTPS effects are time dependent. It just shows to highlight that the earlier we thrombolyze, the better the outcome will be for the patients. So remember, every second count because time is brain, and eating fast can make a difference. So moving on, let's look at the Ministry of Health program strategy for ischemic stroke. If you look at the red box that I highlighted here, it says clearly that MOH plans to strengthen the management of ischemic stroke patients by improving thrombolysis treatment services in all Ministry of Health hospitals. It also plans to establish stroke rehabilitation program to reduce the complication in stroke patients. So this is a good map that shows that current stroke thrombolysis ready hospitals are available in Malaysia. As you can see, there are not many, mostly are centered around the Klang Valley region. And I would like to highlight the part where in the northern region, there are only two hospitals which are currently stroke thrombolysis ready hospitals, namely Hospital Sabrang Prai and Hospital Sungai Putani. Even Hospital Alosta is not a stroke thrombolysis ready hospital yet, but they are in the middle of becoming one in the near future. So MOH plans to expand the number of stroke thrombolysis ready hospitals throughout Malaysia, and they hope that each, each state will have at least one hospital, which is stroke thrombolysis ready hospital, by the year 2021 to 2022. However, this might, be, this might be delayed a bit because of the ongoing COVID pandemic. So let's look at this proposed stroke referral network, um, which, was also implement, uh, which was also proposed by Ministry of Health. So in this stroke referral network, there are a few components in this. that uh, We need the help of hospitals without specialists to help identify patients who present within 4.5 hours from the time of onset. They can then refer these patients to either acute stroke ready hospital, which houses a specialist with neural imaging services, such as brain city brain, or to a primary stroke center, which has a neurologist and advanced neurological neuroimaging services, such as CTA or MRA, depending on the nearest hospital available. So if a large vessel occlusion is suspected, patients can be either thrombolyzed in stroke ready hospital, or we can proceed to mechanical thrombectomy or what we call as endovascular thrombectomy in comprehensive stroke center, which provides these services. As you all know, mechanical thrombectomy can be uh, uh, offered to patients who present within 24 hours after the time of onset. So this is a good net referral network that can help to um, uh, optimize the, the treatment given to acute stroke patients depending on the area. So this is our MOH timeline on what we plan to do regarding stroke services in Malaysia. In 2019, MOH already planned to identify all primary stroke centers in all the state level hospitals. 
identify regional potential regional stroke ready hospitals, engage multidisciplinary team approach as well as education, and start developing acute tre care treatment guidelines according to state based level, and also provide training to health personnel. In the year 2020, we would like to establish primary stroke centers in all state level hospitals. And in 2021, we are supposed to actually have comprehensive stroke centers set up with acute stroke ready thrombosis hospitals set up as well. And uh, targeting all hospitals with specialists and neuroimaging services. By the year 2022 to 2024, we hope to have comprehensive stroke centers established all over Malaysia. So now moving on to acute stroke pathway. So this is very important. Um, we first and foremost, we need to identify this early stroke symptoms, which is which can be uh, easily identified with the mnemonic B fast. B stands for difficulty in balancing, ataxia. E, eyesight changes such as hemianopia. F, showing facial asymmetry. A, which stands for arm weakness. S, for any speech difficulties such as dysarthria. And T, for the time needed to call help as soon as possible. This is important to also inf uh, enforce the patients and the members of public regarding these early symptoms of stroke. So once patients arrive to emergency department, we need to take relevant medical history from them. We need to first of all identify stroke risk factors such as diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, any evidence of cardiac disease such as atrial fibrillation, any medications that patients are on such as oral anticoagulant like warfarin or NOAC, or any antiplatelets that they might be on, such as aspirin or plevix, any conditions that may predispose to bleeding complications, such as those with hematological disorder, and most importantly, we need to look for, we need to look out for stroke mimics, which can be present especially in younger patients who present with acute ischemic stroke. What are the stroke mimics that I'm talking about? First and foremost, we need to identify whether patients are active drug abusers, whether patients are on oral contraceptives, as they can have central venous thrombosis, any intracranial infection such as meningitis or encephalitis, any intracranial trauma or trauma to the spinal cord, or even migraine, as migraine can also present with hemiplegic migraine. Please remember that hypoglycemia itself can present with stroke-like symptoms, but once glucose is restored, is corrected, uh, patients re uh, regain their neuro neurological uh, recovery. And patients who also have electrolyte imbalance such as hypokalemia can also have acute uh, limb weakness, mimicking stroke. So we need to make sure that these are the conditions that uh, that are stroke mimics. So we, they need to be ruled out first before we proceed with other uh, further investigation for acute ischemic stroke. So uh, when we would like to uh, thrombolyze the patient, we need to have a checklist. So in Malaysia, the eligibility criteria for thrombolysis will be the age must be more than 18. The symptom onset must be within 4.5 hours from the time of onset. But please remember, these patients might not, should not have a wake-up stroke. In other words, the time of onset from the from the patient who was last seen well must be documented clearly, and that was that'll be the time frame for us to detect whether it's within 4.5 hours from the symptom onset. The NIHS scoring is very important. This is a score to determine the severity of stroke. If the score is, is, is above 4 or below and below 25, they're eligible to be thrombolyzed. However, in those with NIHS of 2 to 4, with isolated aphasia or dysphasia, any ataxia or hemianopia, which can cause significant disability to patients post-stroke, or those with large artery occlusion or significant penumbra, which can be detected through CTA or MRA, these patients are also eligible for thrombolysis. So if the eligibility criteria are all met, we can then proceed with acute stroke thrombolysis. However, if the eligibility criteria is not met, then we can just provide standard stroke management to these patients, such as antiplatelets, static, referral to the occupational therapy unit, and the physiotherapy unit. So let's move on to the thrombolysis pathway. So I think there's a glitch here, uh, but never mind. Uh, so in the thrombosis pathway, um, sorry for the technical glitch. First and foremost, there need to be an early identification by emergency department. And subsequently, there must be an immediate referral to the medical team if all the eligibility criteria is met. Subsequently, plain CT brain must be done as soon as possible and must be reviewed by the medical team. And then reassessment must be done rapidly by the medical team to see whether the patient is eligible 
to be thrombolyzed if patient fulfills all eligibility criteria and no contraindications are seen we can then proceed with iv alteplase thrombolysis in the ward subsequently post thrombolysis patient will be subjected to post thrombolysis stroke care involving multidisciplinary approach so what do we use to thrombolyze alteplase is the main choice of thrombolysis in the whole world alteplase is a thrombolytic medication which has been used for acute ischemic stroke hemodynamically unstable pulmonary embolism st elevation mi or even in blocked central venous catheter among hemodialysis patients so how do we decide the dose of alteplase first and foremost we need to we need to know the body weight of these patients hence it's very important when patients present to emergency department we need to have a baseline body weight upon um, upon admission so let's see if the patient has uh, patient's weight is 60 kg we need the total dose required for alteplase will be 0.9 mg per kg so in a patient with 60 kg the total will be 54 mg the so 10% of this alteplase must be given as bolus over 1 to 2 minutes so for someone with 60 kg the 5.4 mg will be given as slow bolus over 1 to 2 minutes while the remaining 48.6 mg will be given as infusion over 1 hour so in conclusion please remember we need to act fast as time is brain the most effective measures to treat acute ischemic stroke patients will be early recognition of the bfas stroke symptoms establishment of stroke networks throughout malaysia management by multidisciplinary teams including emergency department radiology department medical department anesthesiology department neurosurgical department and even physiotherapy department and occupational therapy department so we need to act fast to initiate treatment with thrombolysis as early as possible because the earlier treatment of acute ischemic stroke with thrombolysis is initiated the better outcome is for the patients thank you thank you everyone we are now ahead of time chair you so i would like to appreciate if any one of you would like to post any questions on the youtube chat so that we can deliver it to dr bj accordingly now in the meantime you guys can scan the qr code or i'll be sending this qr code uh, the, the link to the chat for you to fill up the attendance for today Any questions for Dr. DJ today? If no, we will time like to thank everyone and we are leave the link open for another 5 minutes before we end the broadcast today. Thank you for joining us and we we'll see you next week.